Hello and welcome to a game with Pete here in the blue playing as the Turks and we'll have his opponent being Smile or Die in the red. Uh, we're going to do a review of Pete's gameplay and see what he can do better. He's in the I think 1600s on Voobly and his opponent Smile or Die was in the uh, high 1700s, there you go, 1775. So pretty big skill difference and we'll see uh, we'll see how Pete manages to play. Ooh, unfortunately, it looks like his sheep are pretty far forward, but let's just start off. Looks at the beginning of the Dark Age. Looks pretty good. Puts his villagers on sheep. So he's doing some scouting, scouting with the sheep. Fortunately, these sheep might be pretty far away and hard to find, but I have to circle back to find them. And you'll see he has a wood line there, so he'll probably scout that out. Send a villager over to that wood line as he moves his villagers. Hopefully he saw that and right-clicked the sheep so the villagers move over faster. And he's finding this wood line in the back, so he sees he has a gold here, gold in the back, stone in the back, and both stones in the back. So a map of... it's pretty okay. Doesn't have a great wood line other than this one, but it's in the back, so it's pretty safe. So he can wall up over here and be pretty safe. Maybe wall up over here later and at least have this wood line and both of these stones in the back safe. So. Pretty safe against being forwarded, and are his sheep going to be stolen? Uh, no, we just missed them two tiles away. Lucky for Pete, he didn't get them stolen. Maybe, uh, maybe Red should have paid attention just to have his scout be a bit further away from the forest while he was scouting. But anyway, lucky for Pete that he still gets his sheep. And so he's sending villager out to take the border now. Good, moving over to the next sheep. And still hasn't found any of his extra sheep yet. Let's see, they're going to be over here. And ooh, sending the villager back accidentally didn't change the hockey there. Always got to be careful with the hockeys. And that could be rather costly because he hasn't found his extra sheep. And if this sheep runs out too soon, then the uh, the villagers won't have anything to do. But it looks like uh, looks like he'll be okay. He'll be in range to start shooting the boar now. So not too bad. That could have been worse. Now garrison, okay, it doesn't need a garrison. Great position on the boiler. And that little that little mistake with the field walking back didn't cost him this time. And building a mill, looks like he's building on this side of the berries. Try to take those try to take those deer with villagers. It's okay. So he continues scouting around. So he's done a pretty good job finding all of his resources, just needs he's the second boar there. Just needs to get his last two sheep and he should know that they're gonna be over here somewhere. And yeah. Again, thankfully, they weren't stolen by his opponent. Meanwhile, his opponent's doing loom, so it looks like his Dark Age has been not quite as good. Uh, he did build the mill one tile away from the berries, so probably will be good for him to uh, send uh, more than just four villages over to the berries. Might want to try to send five just to get a, a nice surround on those berries. And his opponent has three on wood. Pete hasn't scouted his opponent yet, so We'll see, Pete also has the gun wood, so he will, he'll probably be going for scouts with the Turks. And scouts can be good because they turn into light calf and then pretty well-timed warlord, garrison, and great position on that board. So good job so far, but we'll pay attention to the scouting. Could we have a scout fight? Looks like red scouts are being a bit idle now. But I did find those sheep, managed to get them in. Fortunately, they weren't stolen. Not what you can do if they spawn this far forward. But so far, we did see red had to do loom, and we see that Pete is one villager, two villagers ahead even. So. Looks like he's been having a better Dark Age so far, keeping his villagers working, not having to do loom, and that can be a pretty big difference being able to uh, delay loom like that. And we'll see if he goes for 21 or 22 pops. So sending more villagers over to wood now, that's good. Try to get the villager to chop that tree behind the lumber camp. No, ooh, this villager need to reassign him, don't want to let him walk around. That, that's okay, move that villager there, send one there. Not that big a deal, but... Uh, you do lose a bit of time having the villager walk back and forth there instead of chopping the tree directly next to the lumber camp. It looks like you will put the second lumber here. Okay. And you'll keep that nice and safe. And wolf here, that could be annoying if you try to wall. But you should be thinking about how to keep your map safe at this point and what to scout from your opponent. So you see that your opponent has a gold here and berries here. And you'll see that, you see that he has some trees here. You might want to scout instead of on the outside of those trees come around the inside of those trees just so that you can try to see if he's taking wood on this wood line because you you know that his town center should be in this area here because you see the gold, you see the berries, and you see the straggler trees in the house position. So you, you know pretty well where he is. And as you come, will you spot these villagers? 
Uh, no, unfortunately, you didn't scout that wood line. Um, it, it can be good just to make sure that you scout this part of the wood line so that you can see, even if they aren't taking wood there, you'll see the chopped trees in the far before later so you can tell if they eventually do move villagers there. So now your scout is a bit idle, not sure what you're doing now, but you're walling up here and we'll see what you do with this, uh, with this villager. So you're putting the barracks here and uh, let's pause for a moment. So what, what do you see so far of your opponent's map? You see that he, yep, you can see the tree. So you see that he's taking wood here. You see that he has berries here. And you see that he has gold here. And you see that he has a hill here. Now when you scout, it's very important to notice where the hills are. Because that, especially if you have a hill near the gold, you want to try to attack on this hill so that you can force him away from this gold. Force him away from this wood line. Or maybe even get some harassment on the berries when it's early in the game. And similarly, on your map, you see that you have your gold here, and you have a hill in front of this gold. So you want to make sure that you control that hill and protect your gold. And in the back here, you see uh, a nice spot where you could you could probably wall up here eventually just to keep your entire back safe. But you're putting your barracks over on this side of your base. And w when you position your barracks, especially since you're in a Turks War, if you saw that he had a... Uh, if you had scouted a bit better and saw the three villagers on wood, you would have known he's probably going for scouts too. So then you'd want to make sure that when you position your barracks, you have it in a place where you can create spearmen and send the spearmen to different parts of your base. So if you put it over here and you create a spearman, the spearman has to walk all the way over here to your berries or all the way over here to your gold, but all the way back here to the slumber camp just to defend anything. And if we look, just reveal a bit more of the map, there isn't very much over here on this side of the map that you might want to pressure. Maybe there's this wood line here or this gold in the back, but the main resources of your opponent, and especially this hill, are over on the left side of his base. So this is where you want to position your buildings, not just so that you can defend yourself, but so that you also can attack your enemy. And if you put your buildings over here, there really isn't any point to creating your units and spawning them over on this side of the map. You'll probably get this and this walled up at some point. But after that, you know, you really don't need to defend anything over here. It's just a bunch of open desert. Maybe you can put some farms there later. But I think you'd be much better off, instead of putting the barracks there, just building a wall here to keep yourself safe. And then putting the barracks and eventually your stable over here so you can control this hill and this gold. And then also when you want to make Spearman to defend against scouts, he, Spearman just pops out of the barracks and he's already in position to defend against the gold. He's already in position to defend against the berries. He doesn't need to walk anywhere. And it is, no, I guess this wood line still wouldn't be protected by the Spearman, but it is pretty far in the back of your base. And if you can wall up here, that'd be pretty safe already. So let's keep going. And we'll put that barracks up and we'll see what you do with your scout. Okay, so you see he has a wood line here. You see there's an injured villager. Ooh, that, that's a mistake sending the, uh, the injured villager over there. You would, if I see that, I'm thinking once I hit feudal, I want to, and I get the plus two attack bonus on the scout, I want to try to pick off that villager because he, it's only three hits, uh, or four hits with the scout because of the plus one armor to pick that villager. And especially if you can get the scout over onto this tile here and force the villager to run downhill, and you'll do more damage. It'll be really good. So now I'd, I'd try to keep the scout there to pick that villager. That's a mistake putting it that far out. And he also hasn't started walling yet. And it looks like, yeah, you are putting your stable over here, sending your second villager to build a stable. It's good, doing double bit axe and the horse collar once you get the wood. So if we see right now, you had a much better feudal time than he did if we look at the achievements real quick. Uh, let's see, uh, wood and food, you're both, you, both these resources you've collected a lot more than he has. So you're really far ahead in economy. And also you got up about, that's a really good feudal time, especially with UP, uh, UP 1.5, you can get those feudal times that are real nice. But you got up 11 seconds faster than you did. And you also have another villager. Uh, I guess you had produced more just because you got up faster and had less idle time. So you're in a really good position as far as your economy goes. But we see that he is putting his barracks and his stable over on this side of the map, where they're going to be a bit more useful for him than they are to you. And so you could have gotten that house up a bit sooner because now you're housed and you might you might catch up a bit in villagers right now. But okay, still have your villagers on this wood camp. Uh, still chopping pretty e efficiently. Might be good just manually to you know, take a look at them every once in a while, reposition them manually as you're adding in more farms. 
Uh, now, starting to take those deer, which is good. Deer are always nice. Uh, should take care that you wall up this pond as well. You just need a little piece of wall there to make sure he doesn't get in. But now you're making a few scouts and you see he's walling. So those scouts really won't be won't be able to do much if he actually walls this off. So let's take a look at his scouting and see. Yeah, so he's seen this part of the map. He's seen here. He hasn't seen that there isn't much here. Um, it probably would be good for him to wall up either here or here just to protect this wood line so that he has a second wood line in his base. But that is a bit greedy and if he just walls here, that's probably fine too. So you can just put a lumber camp here. And another thing you could be thinking of is maybe try to get a tower up behind this wood line just because it's so far forward and you've scattered a lot of his map and you see that he really doesn't have any other options to make a lumber camp. And you see you pretty much are forcing him back here. So now this is this is a bit greedy from him. He's really late sending an injured villager to wall. You have four scouts coming in, so it's a bit of a mistake by him not walling in time, but you will be able just to pick off that spear. Ooh, he's even getting glitched and get stuck on your scouts. You're running that scout away. Good. And you'll pick off that villager. So that's a late wall by him that's gonna be really costly. And it's uh one that, that worked because your stable is over here, but I think that's more of a, a bit of a mistake by him not getting that wall up in time. So he's going to have to fight with villagers, and there's still an injured villager there. Well, you picked off one of them, and you should get that second. Uh, make sure you're clicking the HP of the villas just to figure out which one. And now he has a spear there and he has scouts, so stop fighting in GB. Okay. Uh, reaction time a bit late, but I guess you maybe wanted to pick off that one more villager. Could maybe try to run your scouts around and notice that that guy only has 13 HP, but you're going to get back. That's fine. You have the advantage in scouts, but yeah, you see that he has a spearman there, so you probably want to... Uh, maybe you want to run away a bit further, get away from that spearman. But yeah, getting an unnecessary hit on your scout and losing that one. And you now have some low HP scouts. Ooh, and that wolf, that's unfortunate. Wolf's going to attack your spearman. But well, hopefully you will get a couple hits on those scouts. But yeah, a bit of miss micro there. Letting, ooh, losing, losing a scout and getting a lot more damage there. To that other scout by the spear, and oof, yeah, a bit of miss micro on that scout. Ooh, losing two scouts to that spearman, that's pretty unnecessary. And now his scouts are coming around, and now just uh, b being a bit careless near that spearman cost you like maybe three scouts there that you otherwise didn't need to lose. And now he has his scouts out, and he has a spearman here, and you're retreating near the stable, which is good. Because uh, your units will come out faster, but at this point, uh, there really isn't... You don't need to fight here. You should... You know that your scouts are already behind a bit because they lost HP attacking those villagers, and now you see that he has more scouts. If you look at the military account here, he's a bit ahead. So, I don't know, it looks like you're... Let's see how your production is. Are you still making scouts? Yeah, you're still making scouts, and you, your vill is queued at the TC. But now, you're moving out, and he's just camping this hill. So, this is what I said earlier. His stable and his barracks are right in front of this hill, so he can control this hill. He's camping his units on it. You're moving out, and you you should see where his scouts are. And you can see that you have your scouts here, and two spearmen here, but still, you can't really push onto this hill. And another thing you want to note is his army all the way over here. So. Where is his army not? Over here. Now would be a great time to send a villager, get a wall up on this part of the map here, just to protect your wood line. You might be afraid maybe he sends like one scout or maybe two scouts over here just to scout and might harass your villager, but you can always just, you know, if you're really worried about that, send two villagers or make one spearman that you can send, uh, unfortunately all the way from over here, but make like one spearman, just try to get this wall up quickly. Since you, one thing you really got to notice is where does the opponent have his army? Because if you know his army is in one part of the map, then you know other parts of the map are safe to move out and safe to put your villagers there and wall or whatever you got to do. So let's keep going. And we see him on this hill. And even though he has, uh, even though you have the extra spearmen, you really can't take that fight. So now you're retreating. Uh, Taking, getting a good downhill hit on that spear, but he's uphill so he can even fight the spearman. And he should win this fight pretty easily because your scouts had some low HP. So moving out onto a hill with low HP scouts, not the best idea. 
And now we see you kind of walled up over here. So if you want to defend your gold, your scouts are right now, they were running outside and have to run all the way around this forest. And you're walling up in front of the gold, putting your blacksmith here. And now, let's see, you still have a three villager lead. And if we look at the achievements, still have a much better economy. It's like almost 400 more of each resource collected than he does. And he has 50 more gold, but that's not the biggest difference at this point. Uh, small difference in the military, he did manage to micro his army a bit better, but you did pick off a few vills. So let's keep going. And now you have this hill here, but he has five scouts. You only have two scouts and a spearman on this hill, so he can push up that hill and take that fight, no problem. You know, try to run away from the spearman, but unless you do something to hold this hill, you're going to lose it, and that means that your gold is vulnerable. So I see you still haven't added in any other buildings. You're still on this one stable all the way over here. No other ranges or anything. Now you're, you're walling up here, and yeah, now you're going to lose your scouts at the bottom of that hill with his scout. His scouts, and at this point you've uh, you're, you're relying basically only on that spearman to take the hill. But now he's moving up, uh, and he's taking the hill now, and he's taking control of your gold. And you're just going to wall out. Uh, we'll lose that villager, but we'll keep your gold safe. So now's the point where he's thinking, okay, time to be aggressive. And he's actually adding in a second stable. Uh, he sees that you're walled, so I don't know if second stable is necessarily the right aggression, but maybe coming forward with a tower would be a better thing. And now, remember, before, you had a chance to build your wall all the way out here, and that would have uh, kept your gold safe. Now you're walling up, and you're not controlling that gold anymore. You're just giving it up. If he brings army around here, he'll be able to harass that easily. And now that, that could make a big difference because you're losing this gold in the front of your base here and you've lost the hill so once he gets castle age and yeah he's sending villagers forward now to build a tower yeah and you had a chance to harass this wood line earlier maybe if you had gone forward with a tower or something but now he's going to do that to you and do you notice it you should notice that villager building it in the fog of war and no I guess, I guess you could build a counter tower here, and I see you are going for stone at this point, but a tower up on this gold earlier would have been a good idea. Remember that uh, that tutorial where the Scottish guy tells you to build a watchtower on the tree, that's or on the hill, and uh, that can be really good when the hill is next to your gold. And now, ooh, his tower is up a lot sooner than yours, and you really do need to get that tower up to stop him from breaking in through that house because you've stopped making units and you're just trying to go to the castle age, which uh, that in itself is probably another big mistake because you see that you had already lost the army control, so you just try to wall up and go to the castle age, but you don't wall any of your resources into your base. It probably would have been better to try to invest more into a feudal army and try to push him back. But now we have a tower fight going on here. He's stopped him from getting into your base for now. And it looks like you're going on to stone because you don't have any other resources to get as you're walling up again. And here again, we see that camel has to come out from that stable, run all the way over here. And uh, you're never going to use your units in this part of the map. You're just going to use them over here as he's trying to break through that palisade wall. But uh, I guess one camel is probably enough to scare off those scouts. Might even be worth it to delete that palisade and just try to get some hits on the scouts, or, or just hit them diagonally through the wall. That works too. Yeah, but now with a couple camels, you'll be safe from those scouts. Uh, so now you probably just want to make sure that you keep this tower repaired. Uh, keep track once that hill starts getting hit and garrison it. Yeah. Would be nice if you had maybe a few skirmishes just so you could sit under that tower and pick their repairing bills. But other than that, looks like you might be going for a castle and for a uh, janissary. And we'll see where you build the castle. Because you're still trying to repair that tower, which is important so you can hit those scouts. Try to try to find the injured scouts. So you see he even invested into the armor upgrade, so you know he's going for a heavy feudal and doesn't even get to the castle age until 25 minutes. So that heavy feudal push really does pay off for him, as now he has the light cavalry. And you've just pretty much stopped creating units other than a couple of camels. So you see, look, military count is 5 to 10. Mostly because you just haven't been creating units, and you're still on only one stable. Whereas if you look at him, he's on still two stables. And now, we saw his map earlier, just you now. He had pretty much no wood line. 
and he's still only taking wood here. Since he was able to just basically camp this hill and defend, and managed to pick off your, arm, your army when it was in small numbers, he was then able to push here and now put all the aggression onto you. And since you decided instead of pressuring his map, you're going to go for the castle age, he now has complete control of the map. And even though if we uh, look, you're ahead in villagers, and if we look at the achievements, you still are pretty ahead in economy, about even in wood, but you still have, uh, you're a lot better in stone and in food. I guess he has more gold, but still economy-wise, economy you're pretty close, but he just has so much control of the map. And now you're pretty much forced to build this castle very defensively, and it, you know, this, this castle isn't really defending anything. Could have made it, you know, you gotta keep track of what army does he have. He has some knights and some light cap. If you have some camels, you can fend that off, and you're just building the, the castle right here. It's gonna stop him from pushing further into your base, should maybe uh, one tile of wall there, it doesn't really matter. But if you had pushed that castle a bit, tried to push it a bit more forward, be a bit greedy, greedy with it, get it to take out that tower and re reclaim control of that hill, you might have been able to get back into this game. But now, your castle isn't... it's defending your farms, but it isn't really helping you claim that goal, and now... You have no gold income from since, well, since before you even finished advancing to the castle age. And you haven't moved over to this gold just because your wall not really in a good position to defend. And let's see, we have a few camels, but it's like you have a thousand food and now you're putting up the market just to try to rebalance that economy and sell some food. Maybe you'll try to make some more. I guess you're probably investing into the Janissary now doing the armor for them, but it's going to take a while to get those going. In the meantime, he's going to build a castle right on this hill. Yeah, and that's having the defensive castle back here, again, allows him to build his castle right on top of this hill, secure it, stop you from getting gold. And despite the fact that he still hasn't come over here, you're still not taking that gold, you're still forced back into this one wood line. Thankfully you have both of those stones in the back, but... Uh, you can stop him from pushing in right now, but there's nothing that you're going to be able to do to break out and harass him. And his base is wide open and open to... Uh, hoping to be harassed everywhere, but... If you just uh, play so defensive like this and you're already behind, you're just going to stay behind. But we see that you're, you did invest into the uh, two TCs and now you're moving, just deleting the wall and we'll see what you do over here. Sounds like there's a farm being expired somewhere. Okay, and putting another town center here. Uh, I probably would have liked to see the town center maybe here a bit more just to claim that gold. You seem to be uh, really just not going to that gold for some reason. But yeah, I guess this will keep your stone and your, your wood line pretty safe. And you can get some farms up back here, but... Uh, let's see, stop him from breaking in over here. But again, could have just maybe even gotten up a stone wall there at some point. Don't really need to worry about him breaking through this side of the map. The main area that you need to worry about is this hill. So now you need to figure out a way either to raid him, which you probably can't do with just camels and janissaries, or to find a way to get him off this hill. So I think at this point you're you pretty much will probably be trying to go imp faster than him to just get out trebuchets to take out that castle. You, you, you can defend, but you, you, you've got to reclaim this hill at some point. And we see that you still do have a pretty good villager lead. Uh, can maybe pick some units off of the Janissary, just don't let them run into the castle. Back. Yeah, okay, that one loses a bit of HP, but not too bad. Oh, those villagers, so messy. He, he's even chopping your wood. He doesn't... He didn't even need to move out into his extra wood line. He had an awful wood line, but didn't even need to move out to this other one, because he, he had control of your hill and could chop your wood. So now he's moving his army over here. Do you see that? Now I guess he's not in downtown watch either. Uh, let's check that. Uh, oh yeah, town watch. Town watch could be useful here just so you can better keep track of his army. All right, moving your camels over here. I guess you know he's going here. So garrison the hills. Move the camels in and attack the camels. You should be okay for now. Uh, his monks are uh, didn't go with his army, so he's you're safe uh, just to defend that with camels now. But again, a nice wall here would have kept this town center safe too. 
and Janissary. Here, I guess you notice that his army is over here, so you're moving your army there too. But unfortunately, you have to go all the way around just to get there. And now you are up to Imp, but again, slower than he is. He'll, he should get the Treb out first, or as the Turks, even the Bombard Cannons out first to get that castle. I guess as the Turks, looks like you will be trying to go for Hussar, just because you get the free upgrade. And uh, <laughs> we're going to go over here to take that, that awful wood line. Because now he... Uh, he can convert your camels, and now that's, uh, that's pretty much it. You really don't have the army to push this back, unless you can work some magic with those Janissary. Uh, you are under a TC, so... Might be able to hold this a bit longer. Well, once he gets Imp, uh, he should probably be using these villages to make a siege workshop, just so he can get the Bombard Cannons out to pressure you. And let's see, what does he have inside of that castle? Yeah, he has some Janissaries too. Yeah, there he goes with the siege workshop. Uh, Iron Casting, getting the upgrades on his cavalry, that'll be the final upgrade for him. And ooh, even picking up even picking up your relics. So you do have a lead of about 20 villages, and the population is still the same. Uh, the problem is just your your position on the map. You gave up so much control of the map that you've backed yourself up into a corner. And if we take another look at the achievements. Still, economy-wise, other than gold, you're ahead of him significantly in every area, and especially in villagers, you're ahead of him. So, you, even though it looks bad, there is, uh, you know, he can still make mistakes, and if you manage to keep this castle alive and manage to take a good fight, you still, still might be a chance, just because you're so far ahead in economy, but you really need to hold. Putting up a second castle in the, in the back of your base, uh, I don't know about that. Um, I might have won I guess the, the downside of putting it here would be that it would be in trebuchet range, but putting it ahead lets you get out two trebs at once, whereas he's only producing them one at a time. So if you take another look at your resources, you now just thinking ahead, remember, you are the Turks. You, this is a pretty controlled area of the map. Thinking ahead by getting out those siege workshops to get the bombard cannons out, because remember, you need to clear out this castle and keep this castle alive. See, he's gotten the Siege Workshop up. Getting that up earlier for you probably would have been a good idea too. And now, he just needs basically to keep these Trebs alive as he'll take out the castle. And you are finally making a Treb, and you're repairing the castle, which is good. You have lots of stone to repair it, and you've gotten Treb out from the back castle. Uh, somehow you got that out first. Instead of this castle, uh, you probably didn't queue up the Treb immediately in the castle age. I wasn't really paying attention to that. But now, uh, you can't really fight this army with Hussars, but you can kind of use them in the Janissary to zone them off of your stuff. And now you get both of those Trebs out, you will lose that castle. Uh, definitely, you have a lot of stone. You definitely could have sent more villages to repair it. Now you're building another castle, but... Uh, again, this castle it defends your farms, but you're completely done with this wood line. You need to... You need to do something right now to break out, otherwise you'll be out of wood. And you're starting to attack that castle, and uh, so, th so the good thing that you have here is your villagers. He only has four villagers forward on that wood line, and unless he sends more villagers forward, you'll be able to repair your stuff a lot better, but you're not repairing that trebuchet. Ooh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. There's, that's just going to go down for free. It's, it's still alive, you still have a chance. You're finally sending villagers to repair. And will it be enough? Uh, will it? Yeah. Looks like you're repairing the other trip too. But no, it finally goes down. Oh man, looks, oh, you were so close to taking that castle down too. If you had just repaired those, those trebs earlier, you might have been able to take down that castle. But yeah, his army is just too big at this point. There's not much you can do anymore. Hasn't added any, added any Lombard Cannons yet, but oh, finally, on that gold, that's good. Building another Lumber Camp, you've gotten yourself some gold and some wood, but uh, yeah, not much that you can do at this point. As the Trebs are just going to take out your other Treb now, and oh, yeah, that only four villages to repair that castle. If you had, if you had queued up a Treb earlier, gotten maybe three Trebs to just attack that castle and repaired them, you probably could have taken out that castle. I don't know if you would have been able to repel that army, but it could have given you a bit more breathing room. So let's uh, let's just look at that again. When you're when you're scouting in your Dark Age, you, know, you always got to make sure that you scout more than just where your resources are. 
that you, you have to know where the hills are and you, you always have to be thinking where are you going to wall and where are you going to build your buildings so that they're in a useful spot, you know? I, I think you know, most, most players know that they, they need to build their buildings into in a wall, but I think uh, getting, you know, past the uh, past the 15xx level really requires you knowing that you need to put your buildings in a place. They're more than just a wall, they're also, you, you build them because they're buildings and they make units. So when you scout your map, you, you have to think, okay, where do I want to place my buildings so that they're useful? And you did get some early harassment here because you didn't wall in time, but after that, you took, uh, you know, lost a bit of unnecessary HP on the scouts due to that spearman, and then tried to push up into his hill. He had his scout, his stable and his barracks right there, his scouts on top of the hill, and was able to defend. I mean, you shouldn't have been trying to push out. You, you know you had done some harassment, you knew you were ahead of Eco, and you still tried to push out when you had a smaller army in a bad position. So when you're scouting, also be careful about when you push out. Don't lose your army unnecessary like you did there. And uh, also keep track of where his army is so that you can, so that you know when it's safe to wall up your base. And also remember, repair your trebuchets, especially if they're right in the middle of all your farms, just send the bills to repair them. Okay, well, GG there. Uh, he gave you the choice of smiling or dying and uh, Apparently you died, but hopefully you can learn from that and next game you'll end up smiling. So if we take a look at the final achievements, military, yeah, he's pretty ahead in the military. Uh, even got three conversions, but largest army. Uh, now at the end you kind of did manage to get a big group of Hussar, and, but it's just uh, not the gold units you needed. And economy, yeah, you, you lost complete control of your gold. Other than that, you had a huge villager lead in a much better economy, but you that, that really didn't help you when you didn't have the map control you needed. So again, Feudal Age, pretty good time. Castle Age, still got there ahead of him, but couldn't really do much with your faster castle time because he was pressuring you and probably would have been good to invest in the Feudal more. All right, so GG there. Uh, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.